Well, hello, everyone. Uh, how are you doing this morning? Good, good. My name is Nate, and I am the lead pastor of The Front Church. And uh, it's really good to be hanging out this morning. Um, we're a new church, as Bo said, starting in the neighborhood. And so tonight, I'm really excited to invite you to our digital launch team meeting, the first digital launch team meeting. We're hosting these digitally so that if you're out there on the internet or if you're here in person, if you're able to come here or if you're not able to come, we can still all gather as a launch team and prepare for what we're planning for as a a grand opening in a post-COVID-19 world. So once there's a green light to have bigger gatherings, that's when we're going to have our grand opening. But before then, we're just going to phase in certain things of baby step by baby step. And we're going to talk about that tonight. And so we'd love to see you there. Um, You can let us know if you want to join on your Connect card. Or if you're already getting text messages from us, you're going to get a text message about that um, today. And, um, And it'll have a link to a Facebook page. And the Facebook page has... The Zoom link and the password. Okay, so hopefully see some of your uh, smiling faces again tonight, but uh, uh, without mask. Huh? You don't need to wear a mask on Zoom. Oh man, how amazing! Um, can I tell you about the best chicken noodle soup I've ever had in my entire life? It was a Sunday morning in October of 2014, and I'd gotten up extra early that morning, put on my running clothes. And I headed to downtown Minneapolis with 10,000 of my closest friends, who you can see in this picture right here, because we're going to run the Twin Cities Marathon. And let me tell you, running 26.2 miles, no matter how much you prepare for it, is brutal. It's brutal, especially the last few miles. And so here's a picture of me, my buddy Dave running. I look way happier than I'm actually feeling in that moment. And Dave looks like a champ. But I know we were both hurting by this point. And the crowds inspire you to keep going. But man, your tank is empty. You're tired. You're, 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 it's just like, it's a slog to the finish, just putting one foot in front of the other. And when you cross the finish line, they make you feel like superheroes. They give you these cool little capes. You're like, wow, I got my superhero cape. And it keeps you warm, and they put a medal on you. Be like, wow, you ran 26.2 miles. And there, past the finish line, in these big tanks that keep stuff really warm, was really warm chicken broth. And you know how good that stuff tastes? After 26.2 miles, where your body is literally burning more nutrients than it has ever burned previously, that and more, you're so tired, you're so depleted, you're almost too tired to think that you're even hungry, and you're so thirsty, and that chicken broth mm, is the best. Thing. It's like, it's the thing that your body, it's exactly what your body needed at exactly the time your body needed it. The best chicken noodle soup of my entire life, and it didn't even have noodles in it. That's saying something. Does 2020 feel like a marathon to anyone else besides me? Man, I felt like it was one thing after another. Um, I had a family member die and officiated a funeral in February. And that's before things kind of hit the fan. Then in March, things get crazy. We have friends and family who've been sick. We've had friends and family who have died um, during this time. And that's just part of 2020. 2020's had the excitement of pregnancies and the heartache of miscarriages. Uh, I need people. And instead, I've been people starved. And we need people, right? But instead, we've been people starved. And I'm just tired. Anyone else besides me? I'm just tired. Does your tank feel empty? Do you feel like this has just been a slog? A friend and I were emailing back and forth a couple weeks ago. And here's what he said. He, he was talking about going back to work after 
Christmas and New Year's. And he said, it's actually been really difficult going back to work this week. I'm just so bored with being home all the time and working remotely. All the while, I know that we need to stay home to do our part with this thing spiraling out of control here. Our hospitals are taking crazy steps, possibly opening a field hospital because so many people need care right now. So all of that has me in a depressive state of mind. I asked my wife the other night, what do you do when you can't convince your feelings of what you know to be true of God and about reality? That there's hope and joy to be found no matter what the circumstances. I'm just so over this change of pace and not seeing people often. It seems like I'm not able to devote my attention to anything other than the negative right now. Anyone else besides me and him? Even in time with God, it's so tainted with brokenness that gratitude and joy and enjoyment, etc. is hard to fully experience. And it doesn't help that my wife is working a lot right now. Family struggles, right? You guys been there? But just keep me in your prayers. I really have so little to be down in the dumps about personally, so I feel a little guilty when I am, as the events of the year haven't really affected us all that much. It just is what it is. I also want to be a person of hope for my lost friends. I want to show that the church is not bridled by adversity in how I live, but I just struggle to find the hope and joy of eternal promises I know to be true right now. Anyone there besides him? My friend Brad says, I never really struggled much with anxiety or depression until this year. Like, lump me in. Lump me in there. Anyone tired from the marathon, 2020, the slog? Anyone's tank empty? Oh. Can I ask another question? When was the last time you remember experiencing the, fre- the, the refreshing breath of God? You know, when, when, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, when, you're filled, when you experience the presence of God, and you're like, no, can, can you remember? Was it, at, was it at church camp as a kid? Is that the last time you remember experiencing the refreshing breath of God? Or um, was, it, was it yesterday? We just had a great time in scripture and prayer. Was it yesterday? Was it yester month? Was it yester year? Can you remember it? Man, guys, the slog, the marathon is hard. I don't know about you, but I really desire spiritual breakthrough and to experience the refreshing breath of God breathed into me again. Because it's just too hard to roll on our own strength. Man, God has given us a tool to get through this marathon. And it's a tool for breakthrough. And it's something like... It's something like that amazing chicken broth at the end of the marathon where it's just what we need at the exact time we need it. Something for hungry and thirsty souls. So I'm going to say something. I need you to stay with me. Scripture will be on the screen that you can open or turn on your Bible to the book of Matthew. Matthew's about three quarters of the way back in my Bible. It's right after the book of Malachi. It's right before the book of Mark. We're going to go to Matthew, big number six. But while you turn there, this morning we're going to be talking about prayer and fasting. And we're going to actually be talking about prayer and fasting for for a whole month, beginning this morning. And next Sunday, not this Sunday, this Sunday is going to be a primer. But next Sunday, we're going to invite anyone and everyone. Every person who's thinking about being on our launch team, every person who's here on Sunday, every person who's in the internet world out there who's watching us and maybe a part of our digital launch team, or even if you just want to join the bride with us, we're going to invite anyone and everyone beginning next Sunday to join us for 21 days of prayer and fasting together. What are we praying and fasting about? For spiritual breakthrough. For breakthrough. For, to experience the refreshing breath of God again. We're going to pray and fast for ourselves. But we're also going to spend time praying and fasting for the front church. I love the passage of Psalm. There's a psalm that says, Unless the Lord, or, or, in, in, unless the Lord builds the house, its laborers labor in vain. Meaning, 
we can't manufacture this thing. We can't grow this thing. We can't build this thing. Unless the Lord builds this thing, it's labor is labor in vain, which means we need to ask God to help build the thing. We can't just be rolling on our own strength. Not just during a marathon, but as planting a church. And so we have tools for you guys. We're going to have devotional books to give everyone next Sunday. Anyone and everyone, we're going to have digital devotional books for you guys on, in, in virtual land. And we're going to give you tools to fast. We're going to talk about why to fast. We're going to make sure that you feel set up, not just like, whoa, whoa, whoa well, how do I do this? We're going to help you. We're going to help each other as we move towards this. But before we go there, we got to start here. Matthew 6. Verse 16. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus says that when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. First thing I want to point out, Jesus is talking to his followers, his disciples, that's anyone who has a relationship with Jesus. If you have a relationship with Jesus, if you're following Jesus, that's you. And he says, when you fast. He doesn't say, if you fast. He says, when you fast. Who is really bad at fasting? I can't remember the last time. I cannot remember the last time. So I'm right there with you guys, but I feel Jesus inviting me into this, and I believe Jesus is inviting us into this. And he says, when you fast, not if you fast. And then he goes on and he says this next part. He says, you know, don't be like the people who are just fasting so that other people will be like, whoa, that person's so awesome or that person's so religious. He says, they've received their reward in full. Reward's going to become a theme here in a minute. But he says, if you're just fasting for religious recognition or to impress people, whether religious or not, you already, okay, that's what you get. You get the recognition. That's it. You see, um, religion can get in the way of Jesus. We talk about this often at the front church. Um, Jesus is always upsetting the religious people. Why? Because he keeps insisting that those religious deemed far from God aren't actually far from God. And fasting as religious ritual can get in the way of Jesus instead of lead us towards Jesus. Fasting was abused before Jesus' time, during Jesus' time, and after Jesus' time. In your own time, I don't have time to go there. I wish I did. Isaiah 58. If you like to read the Bible, if you want to read something good this week, Isaiah 58, 3 through 12. And God, speaking to his people, says, this is the type of fast I'm looking for. Isaiah 58, 3 through 12. Because they were messing up this whole fasting thing too. They're doing it for all the wrong reasons. So motivation matters when we're fasting. But this next part of the passage, I want you guys to mark it down. Like mentally mark it down. Write it down on your phone. If you are a person who sticks post-it notes on your bathroom mirror in the morning, like stick it on the post-it note. If you are a person who writes it on a note card, write it on a note card and put it on your car dash. I want you to mark this down. like, Like stow it away because this is such a big deal. Look at what Jesus says. He says, but when you fast, as he's asking, he says, your father who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When we fast to more fully focus on seeking God, Jesus promises reward. Jesus is no liar. He's not making this up. He says, when you fast, To more fully focus on seeking God, your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And these rewards, as we've already talked about, they're not accolades. They're not people recognizing you. No. If that's why you're fasting, you already got that, he says. So I want to just ask a question real quick. What is fasting at its core? And I have a definition up here for us. Fasting is a stripping away of something to more fully focus on seeking God. And Jesus says, when you're stripping away something to more fully focus on seeking God, 
Motivation matters. Seeking God. You're not doing this to be seen. You're doing this to seek God. And when you do this, to just hone in, and he wants to make sure we understand motivation matters. Look at this next one. He says, when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting. You're not doing this to be noticed. You're doing this to seek God. To more fully focus on seeking God. Stripping away something to more fully focus on seeking God. And he says, look at this. Your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Reward. Jesus promises reward after fasting, when we're fasting to seek God. Do we, do we feel the gravi- gravity of that? Like, I want to talk about rewards for a moment. I think it's important in our, um, in, 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 in our, um, our context to address what rewards are and aren't. Okay? Jesus isn't saying that if you fast, you get amazing brownie points with God. God's going to think you're so much more awesome than someone else. That's not what this is about. That's not it. Jesus isn't saying that when you fast, he's not saying your reward is more of God's love. God's going to love you more if you fast than if you don't. That's not what he's saying. We know, Scripture is super clear, that Jesus loves, that, that, that God's love is demonstrated to us and that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. So God's love is shown to us in that when, to, to, to every person ever born, irregardless of whether they fasted or not, sought him or not, loved him or not, he has loved them. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you any more. And there's also nothing you can do to make God love you any less. So though, we aren't talking about like brownie points with God reward here. We're talking about something different. What is this reward? Jesus says, when you fast, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I think reward is summed up in spiritual breakthrough. Not sort of material benefits. Not like keeping on the wealth and the money. I don't think that's how it goes. I mean, the disciples, like, they don't die rich. They, they die martyrs. Like, um, Jesus, when he's talking about reward, I think he's talking about the experience of the presence of God. Spiritual breakthrough, that refreshing breath, that chicken broth that our thirsty soul and our hungry body so desperately needs. And I think also, I think the reward is salvation experienced. Not salvation earned. We can't earn this thing. We can't like do enough to earn it. It says, no, actually the entry requirements for following Jesus and becoming a Christian are saying how much we mess this up. It's God, we can never do this. We can never earn this. We're always messing it up. It's the admittance that will never measure up. That is the entry requirement to start our relationship with Jesus. So it's not, fasting is not about earning something, but fasting is about experiencing the salvation of God. I mean, how many times during the marathon of life, how many times during the marathon of 2020 are we running to something And maybe it helps us relax. But is it filling our soul? How many times are we running to things just to wind down, but they don't actually fill us? We aren't actually experiencing anything spectacular. We're just winding down. Anyone tired from the marathon? And you want... The refreshing breath of God breathed into you again? Anyone's tank empty? Anyone just tired of the slog? And, not, and, and tired of not being able to remember the last time you experienced the refreshing breath of God breathed in you and through you. I have good news for you this morning. And you can mark this down. Jesus says that a time of fasting, a time of stripping away something, to more fully focus on seeking God. Jesus says a time of pursuing him and not the praise of people. When you fast, look at this, 
When you fast, your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. You see, at the end of the marathon, He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly when you need it. And this is, offer, this is the chicken broth at the end of the slog for the thirsty and hungry souls. And I feel like I'm not the only one who has a thirsty and hungry soul right now. So a week from today, Sunday, January 17th, we're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting together as a church. And we're fasting for spiritual breakthrough in your own lives and also fasting, seeking God to do something together. I actually believe that Jesus has something for our church that if we don't do 20, these 21 days of fasting and seeking the Lord together, we might miss it. I believe that praying and fasting There's a strange dynamic relationship between us and God. I believe God has something he wants to reveal to you personally. And I believe God has something he wants to reveal to us as a a community. I believe he, he will reward us if we seek, if we strip away to seek him. And so we're going to ask Jesus to make good on this promise. Hey, Jesus, this is what you said. This is none. This isn't what Nate said. Like, this is what you said. You said. If we strip away something to more fully focus on seeking God, if we seek, if we're fasting, eyes focused on God to more fully focus on God, He will reward us. So I'm asking you guys to consider fasting with us. Beginning next Sunday. 21 days. Is your soul thirsty? Are you tired and desire breakthrough? We're going to give you tools to do this with us, okay? So we're not just hanging you out to dry like, hey, figure this out now. We're going to be talking about this every Sunday for the next month, okay? So we're going to do that. We're going to have a 21-day devotional guide that I have a picture of here. And this 21-day devotional guide is, uh, 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 Jess, can you throw the picture of the book? Prayer and fasting. Um, it's short little devotional. It'd probably take 10 or 15 minutes to read through it and to journal through it every day. And I think it would be wonderful if our whole community did this together. We'll have those for you next week. And then I want to just give you some fasting ideas. What could I do? How could I fast? One, you could literally fast the old-fashioned way. You could give up food one day a week for three weeks. What's The, the deal with giving up food is that you're your stomach starts to growl, right? Oh, especially if you're a coffee drinker, it starts to really growl. And those hunger growls are meant to point us towards prayer, to point us towards God, to take the, the, the time, that, the, the thing when we stripped away something that creates a hole and fill that hole where we stripped away with something else. That's the point. So maybe this an old-fashioned, one day a week, no food fast might be it for you. Maybe for some of you, it would be giving up, giving up uh, the, 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 the cold beer, the glass of whiskey at night that you've become accustomed to. Maybe it's giving up coffee and then suffering through three or four days of headaches and thanking God for ibuprofen a little bit. Um, maybe it's not necessarily cutting out something as it is is adding something. Maybe for some of you, your fast just needs to be reading through the 21 days, the 21 devotional day guide every day. And if you do that, you'll actually have to strip away 15 minutes of something. I don't know, 15 minutes of phone time, 15 minutes of... 15 minutes earlier in the morning, you had to strip away something to then fill that with this. And maybe you just want to get in the habit of being in the Bible or praying. This is going to be a helpful guide and an easy guide that's going to help you do that. Maybe you want to read the Bible and you're like, well, where do I start? How about reading the Gospel of John? Because the Gospel of John is 21 chapters. Hey, chapter a day, 21 days. That could be something. Maybe... Fasting looks like simplifying your life. What do you need to say no to for
for the next three weeks. What do you need to strip away to more fully focus on seeking God? Maybe it's redeeming your exercise routine. Maybe when you exercise, you're always like jamming to your jams or you're listening to your favorite podcast. And instead, it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to listen to podcasts. I don't listen to worship music. I'm going to listen to some Bible teaching as I work out. Maybe you can redeem your workout. That could be a fast. Maybe it's redeeming your drive. Maybe you spend so much time, you spend time in the car. And you're always listening to your favorite radio station. Or you're always listening to your, to, to your favorite podcast. Or again, your favorite jams. And maybe it's saying no for 21 days, only worship music. Some of us, that's... Some of you out there, maybe you won't raise your hand. Maybe that sounds like hell to you. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But what if it's listening to worship music? Or what if it's listening to a, a nice Bible podcast? We're going to give you some resources. Instead of listening to the radio station you always listen to or the music you always listen to. For 21 days, redeem your drive. Um, I put together a playlist that uh, you could listen to during that time on Spotify. Robin and I, during these 21 days, one night a week after we put our girls to bed, we're going to turn our living room into a prayer room. And we're going to play worship music for an hour. We're going to get out journals. We're going to pray. We're going to journal. We're going to set aside that time, one night a week, to seek God. Maybe it's turning your living room into a prayer room. I mean, we have a lot of questions. Here's the question I want to ask, though. And it's a question nobody here wants me to ask. It's so funny. Rob asked me this question uh, on Wednesday. What's the thing you go to when you're bored? What's that thing that you just find yourself going to without even thinking about it? What's that thing? I'm going to tell you next week, but I'm going to give it up. So you can come back next week and find out what that thing is for me. What's that thing for you? What do you need to strip away so that you can more fully focus on seeking God? Do you know what faith boils down to, you guys? Faith is calculated risk. There's never faith without risk. It's calculated risk. And I'm asking you, will you take a calculated risk on the promise of Jesus? That when you fast, your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I believe God has something for you after 21 days of praying and seeking Him. I believe God has something for us. And I don't know the mysterious ways of God, but I am not sure that that thing will be there if you don't. Maybe it would be. Maybe God's just going to throw it on you. God's got a grace to do that. But I think that Jesus, when he says your father will reward you, means it. I can't tell you what that is. But I think there's something for us on the other side of fasting that I want to invite us into together. Just like that chicken broth at the end of the marathon. I think our Father knows exactly what our thirsty and hungry souls and body need after this marathon that we've been in together. And I think he's offering it to us. Would you pray with me? Jesus, you have an expectation for us when we fast and you have a promise for us When we fast and we strip away something to more fully focus on seeking you, our Father will reward us. And so I just ask that you would prepare us for this time. That next Sunday when we begin this journey together, that you would prepare us, that we would seek you, and that you would meet us. And we would experience breakthrough with you, the refreshing breath of your, your refreshing breath breathe back in to us as we seek you, as we strip away and seek you, as we strip away and seek you. I pray that you would build us up, that you would build your church. And we cannot wait to see what you have for us. 
I pray we would not miss it. In your name, amen.